something straight CP. This is one of those pre-album EPs, and as I often conclude on this show, this is one to get around to a bit later. But it is still a great example of early Bonham. It's a grungy product, but approached with more levity. Tracy doesn't have to be all self-serious. There's a couple of riffs that are directly from Nirvana, but once you've allowed for that, this is a great start album proper and this has the hit on it but also it's a full length of what i've just mentioned a fun and energetic version of what we might have called grunge at the time tracy's roots in classical music and violin bring a slightly more intellectual approach to it but it's still from the gut it's obvious which track is the big single and it's not the track one hit wonder or the one but still, the whole thing plays through really well. This is a very slow-moving career, and you can check out a long-form interview with Tracy to find out how come. But as far as the content goes, that brings us down to down here. This does the same kind of things again, and it's thereby quite reliable. It's what you'd expect after the prior one, and it's worthwhile. But nothing quite shines through or tops that. Still superior to the EP because it's got more ideas and more thought-out ideas, but doesn't quite match up to burdens. Then jump another half decade in the future for this one. Oh, disregard the B.E. I stupidly spent a while and an amount seeking this out, not realizing the whole content is on the album except for a dodgy live Led Zap cover. And this more standard, more considered approach to songwriting brings something new as far as this career is concerned. It's not quite as unique or effervescent as the prior material, but it's still quirky, and there's more integrity to it. Maybe it would survive more short-term re-lessons. I'm going to place that between albums one and two. Now, I did buy a copy of the next one, but I can't prove that here, so over to the Dark Realm. Actually, before that, I've just learned of this EP with the 11 tracks. I've been streaming it on her SoundCloud, and it's worthy of a physical copy. Yeah, I think my copy of Manhattan went to a charity shop. She's no longer doing rock music, and she doesn't owe us that, but it's a way to lose my attention. It starts with sultry acoustic grooves, then resorts to meandering over long acoustic plots, nothing particularly awake. The drummer's on brushes, that's the vibe here. I think this work might be more honest of Tracy and yet less convincing. It's me ranking these, so yeah. Then there's this love-themed EP that I think might not be available right now. Not that many new tracks, gonna admit defeat and skip it. Now this one goes to Yankee Folksy for my palette. I'm justified in getting off her train when I hear this. Maybe I'm just not the audience. There's some very familiar song structures. The best bits are kind of Tom Petty level, and I do prefer it to the last album. Modern Burdens is a reimagining of Upright with an array of guest stars. We're still in the sound I'm not into, and for most of the tracks, maturity seems to come in the form of stripping them of their immediacy and youth. The songs now take longer to listen to than they probably took to write, and that rapid whimsy felt like an important part of Upright. The strength of the source material and a couple worthwhile versions place it here. And now I have a proper excuse to tune out because I'm literally not the audience if she's doing children's music. I've put the album on, and it is good, with a more compelling energy than the last few, but it would be dishonest for me to rank it. Maybe that's been true for a while. At this end, there's no point to me scrutinizing her career. She's just doing what she wants for those who want it. It's possible I've missed something because of how low profile and active a musician Tracy is now. Look, can't find any results for this. Maybe they dreamt it. That is the name of a band who made a tribute song for Prince Charles and Diana's wedding in which Charles describes how he watched her as a child, so I've got something out of the search. That guy seems to be the only listener to this album of Bowie and Prince covers. Maybe it's just a live bootleg. I could contact him or Tracy or I could leave it. There's also this free online EP I just learned. I'm guilty to not be into this newer stuff, but I can really advocate these earlier ones, and then maybe some viewers will like both halves anyway. Yeah. 